drink beer, it's good for you. Hello and welcome to the video. Within this guide I will be sharing my very tried and tested recipe and all of the steps will be explained to you so that you can brew a very flavourful Oktoberfest beer with various options depending on if you want it fast or traditional. Let's get started with a little background information first. The Oktoberfest style is a German beer style that is rich in toasted or biscuit-like flavours and has a balanced and clean hop profile. Traditionally this style is known as a Märzen, which is a reference to the month of March, which is when it was brewed and then aged by lagering throughout the summer. A stronger version of this beer was served in October as part of the Oktoberfest, hence the different names. The traditional style is amber in colour ranging in deepness, but these days the German festival version is quite a lot lighter and has become known as a Fest beer, meaning a party beer. This guide is not covering this version. You will find the darker version from craft breweries though, and as with many other beer styles, this one has crossover and poetic license these days. Naturally this annoys traditionalists, but personally like many I simply enjoy great beer in many forms, but I am happy to say that my recipe is the darker and stronger traditional style, and should please most as well as being suitable for fast or traditional methods. Here is the sneak preview of my recipe's vital statistics. The recipe offers a 6% ABV traditional style that is full of great classic malt flavours. I know that some will wish to tune this alcohol level down, but I strongly suggest against that, not because it will break tradition, but because it will negatively impact the nice flavours that you will find in this 6% version that simply cannot be found in a lower alcohol version. If you are looking for a tasty lager that is lower in ABV, then there are simply many others to choose from instead, much of which I have covered on this channel in the past. This recipe is targeted in the middle of bitterness for the style with a BUGU ratio of 0.37, which I found to be a great area for most drinkers. The EBC level at almost 19 is on the lower end of the colour spectrum, but end colour was not the main consideration for me here, as always flavour was king. For the very best results and so that you are actually brewing the recipe as intended, I strongly suggest that your initial steps will be to convert the recipe before ordering in your ingredients. I have an easy guide to doing this on Brewfather on my channel as shown on screen now. This recipe is being brewed using the Gen 4 Brusilla 65 to the volume of 20 litres or approximately 5.28 US liquid gallons, but as part of the conversion process this can be scaled and shaped to suit your own brewing system and volume requirements. Recipe conversion is an essential part of the process for the intended results. Do know that this applies to all recipes you will obtain from others, not just mine. I also strongly recommend that you plan your water profile ahead. You may wish to skip this if you are a new beginner, but this is for sure an important direction to move into as soon as you possibly can. For this recipe I recommend using a soft water profile because it will simply push forward the sweet malt flavours that really define this traditional style. Shown on screen is an example of a soft water profile from Brewfather, which is the same profile that I have used throughout this recipe's development, so as such the recipe was written to this profile. Let's now get on to the brew, which as always starts with adding your milled grain into your preheated strike water, stirring as you go. This is something to take your time with. Rushing this part will impact the rest of your brew. By the time you are finished, you want to make sure that every grain is wet and that you have no grain clumping together. I will show this process with extended time within this video to highlight the correct methods while we look at the recipe's grain bill. The stage that this focus is on is once all of the grain has been added and I am finalising the mash. Shown on the left of our screen now is our grain bill which I will now explain. Firstly we have Pilsner malt at 55% of our grain bill and this will provide the vast majority of our fermentables as well as a crisp and clean canvas for our other malts to place their flavours onto. At 25% we have Munich malt which will provide vibrant malty flavour along with flavours that include bready or toasty notes, nut and toffee as well as honey. This will vary a little from monster to monster, so be sure to keep notes on those that you prefer for certain styles for better results into the future. Then at 10% we have Melanoidin malt which will bring its own mix of powerful malty flavour, which is far stronger and richer than those from Munich, hence the lower level in this recipe. But the two paired together especially well for such flavours for this recipe with the melanoidin creating a stability between the two malts as well. Furthermore this malt will contribute a beautiful amber to red colouring effect and is present in building this recipe's colour. 
We also have flaked barley at 5% within this recipe that looks to balance the beer with some grainy bite, as well as providing more head retention. Then also at 5% there is carapils, which is a dextrin malt, which improves body, mouthful and head retention, so as such a useful malt to complete this recipe. Shown on screen now is our mash profile. For this mash I am using a mash in temperature of 67 degrees Celsius, which is just under 153 degrees Fahrenheit. Mashing at this temperature is common and will result in a medium body beer, which is this recipe's target. Then for 10 minutes I suggest a mash out step. Not only will this stop enzyme activity, but it will also decompact your malt, allowing for an easier sparge. After the mash we lift up our grain basket or malt pipe depending on what it's called on your system and add water to rinse the remaining sugars still held by our malt and at the same time top up our volume. Again do not rush this part and be sure to cover the entire area of grain by sparging evenly. Here we are now at the boil stage and our water is looking much darker compared to when we started our mash, which is to be expected due to the chemical changes during the process. This will continue throughout fermentation, but when poured or in beer will look lighter in the glass. During the boil our first task is to stir in the foam that forms on top, which is simply protein. This is an important part of the process and will avoid the dreaded boil over. This should be performed gradually over the course of the boil as needed. Let's now look at the boil schedule which is now shown on the right of the screen. In keeping with the modern boil time I am boiling for just 30 minutes. For more information about this please see the video now shown on screen. The hop additions used here are both for using SARS hops and take place at the start of our 30 minute boil for bittering and halfway through at 15 minutes for flavour and aroma. SARS hops are mild in flavour and contribute a classic combination of herbal and spicy effects that are very commonly found in lager styles. When adding your hops be sure to give them a very good stir in as we really want that vegetable matter to sink and the oils that are extracted to blend within the wort nicely. Also added to this boil list is the use of yeast nutrients which are essentially a cheap yet effective insurance policy for your yeast and I also recommend the use of super Irish moss for helping your beer clear faster. After the boil it was time to cool and transfer my wort into my fermenter which in this case was within the new Firmzilla triconical fermenter. After I had a litre or so transferred I then pitched my yeast. There are various choices here which I will explain. Firstly, my chosen yeast for this recipe is Omega Lutra, which I really love as a pseudo lager alternative. I am using the dry version, but this is also available in liquid form of different packaging as shown on screen. By using Lutra yeast, not only do I have a very pleasing end beer that tastes very much to style for me, but I also have a much faster fermentation and conditioning period without the need for lagering. So as such, this is the fast method, and frankly I feel that this will satisfy most drinkers with its end result. Here are the fermentation temperature details for those that will perform this fermentation without pressure. However, if you do decide to use pressure, and I would certainly recommend it, then like all yeast companies, I recommend using no more than one bar, though often I go under this at between 10 to 12 psi. Respect your yeast, and it will always respect you back. If you use pressure, then you may use a higher temperature with this yeast, and because it is fake, then this can be much higher than regular yeast at levels now shown on screen. If you wish to go the more traditional route or can obtain Lutra, then shown on screen are three types of dry lager yeast that will also lead to great results. Please check the fermentation temperatures for each of these online or ask at your homebrew store for details. Once again, keeping pressure to a maximum of one bar as good generic advice. Do be aware though that if you do use these yeast, then you will need to perform lagering for the best results and traditionally this would have been performed at between 4 to 7 degrees Celsius. Do not make the mistake of going any lower than this though, as this is actually just made for American lagers, not European, and will result in a loss of European flavour, which is naturally part of this style and part of what separates it from American lagers. To lager or lagering as it is known is actually a northern European word meaning storage in actual fact and serves as a reminder of the origins of the lager style. For this style the traditional lagering period would have been from March until October being around 8 months but you may find that much less time than this is satisfactory for your taste. A very good way to gauge this is to have it lagering in a keg and occasionally drawing a sample to see where it's at. Some will be happy after a couple of weeks, but often longer times are worth the wait for many. Let's now look at the resulting beer from this brew, starting with a look at the pour and then moving on to tasting notes. 
As you can see this has a nice golden quality to it when it's poured that goes towards amber once it's in the glass, but this colour will vary according to light as you will see soon. This beer has been in the keg for just under two weeks at this point at an average temperature of 5 degrees Celsius, which is the equivalent of 41 degrees Fahrenheit. This beer has been under 12 psi of pressure, which is 0.83 bars for this time, and I'm also using this pressure for serving too. No attempts have been made to clear this beer, so what you see are the natural results, just how I like them these days. And here are my tasting notes. The aroma here is fresh and clean with a combination of light malty and different bready notes. In terms of flavour on entry, this beer offers a very clean and subtle malt flavour that develops quickly into a complex bready maltiness with a side serving of a little toasty maltiness too. This one starts with a hint of malty sweetness, but then finishes dry. There is also a slight herbal effect that way in the background, but you will have to search for it. I know that in contrast to some beer styles, this one is subtle in its flavours and achieves a really nice level of elegance due to this, but without being almost flavourless like some lager styles can be. I have found that most people enjoy this middle ground the most, and drink this beer like it is around 4% for the first few glasses at least. My final impression is that this is a 6% ABV beer that drinks as easily as something at around 4% with clean subtle flavours and as such is somewhat an unusual style if you really think about it but it has to be said that it's almost impossible to respond to it without some love for the genius of the style. This style and of course my own recipe along with it are designed around celebration though and this beer despite being on the higher ABV side will help any party along with its very inoffensive flavour profile that works well to please the vast majority. I would certainly love to hear your review and tasting notes within the comments section of this video once you have brewed it and given it at least a couple of wigs to find itself. I do hope that you found this video useful, informative and interesting. If so, why not consider liking and subscribing? For further support you can join the channel's Facebook group and if you would like to support the channel then check out the channel's merchandise store as all profits go back into the channel. Until next time, happy brewing!